Game of Thrones Season 8 wasn't that bad. Changed my mind. What is up, guys? It's the Sound Alchemist, and I'm sitting on my throne, fresh off of the final episode of the show, the phenomenon, Game of Thrones. So, uh, where do I even start? Game of Thrones has been going on for, what, seven, eight years now? Eight years, because obviously there's eight seasons. And for most of it, up to season six, seven-ish, the writing was phenomenal. And that's because you had the freaking books by George R. R. Martin to kind of give you the flow, the backstory, the rich lore, the interesting character developments. And then season near the end of season seven and especially this last season eight who the internet is up in cahoots saying this is the worst season ever character development character arcs are being tossed out the window for just shock and huge like cg moments that are just meant to just like entertain instead of actually make sense and yeah there's a lot of that going on this season but I don't think it's as bad as everybody makes it out to be. Fight me in the comments. <laughs> but um, there's one thing that I do agree that was a huge, huge, huge letdown. Um, I'm going to be all over the place. I've got no script for this. Um, I don't have bullet points, so I'm just going to be working off the things that come off of the top of my head. Again, this I, I literally just saw the episode and I'm just here to talk. Kind of get this weight that I've been harboring on my shoulders and just like want, wanting to put these th thoughts out there and also read your comments down below about the season. So anyway, the first thing that I agree that really was a huge letdown was the whole army of the dead. The White Walkers, the Night King, they were a huge threat, yes, just not the Night King himself. He got taken down fairly easy, although I thought it was in a really badass way for Arya. Like, when I saw that last scene, and I saw Arya going in for the kill, got choked out, and then that switch up, whew, I, like, I cheered. I'm like, oh shit, Arya's gonna die, and then I cheered again when she killed him. That would have been so much better if there was, like, a fight beforehand, or it was just something... Like, I felt like something was missing. It was such a great scene, and it made sense, I guess, when they brought up the whole Melisandre thing about her killing, you know, green eyes, blue eyes, brown eyes kind of thing. And Arya being a badass, training with the faceless men and the god of many faces or whatever. So it made sense that she'd be the badass to do it. Um, that was really good, but again, like... The freaking generals of the of the army of the dead didn't do anything. Like you saw for a split second that one of the generals like noticed something and he kind of looked, but it was already too late and Arya was already like about about to pounce on the, the Night King. So I just wish there was just more to it, man. Like it would have been so badass if like John was in there, you know, all battered and bleeding after taking out the dragon somehow. And, like, he's there to stop the Night King. The Night King walks up to him. Night King's gonna stab him. And then if Daenerys would have, like, just obliterated the whole area in Dragonfire. And then you see Jon come out unscathed because of his Tar Targaryen blood. That would have been so badass. And then him doing the final stab with, um, I believe it's called Longclaw. His Valerian steel sword. That would have been pretty cool. Um, it gives you action, it gives you suspense, because you don't know if Danny literally just killed everybody and by just burning the whole area down. Um, so, because we know that the Night King can survive Dragonfire, but if we didn't know that from before, I think that would have been just a huge amount of suspense, because it's like, did she just kill everybody? Does she, did she just burn the Night King, burn John, all in one fell swoop, taking away the one guy who has, you know, claim to the throne? And then John's surviving, you know, because again, Targaryens don't burn or whatever. That would have been really awesome and would have made the Night King a little bit more of a threat. Um, just to see how badass he is. Because pretty much all the Night King just did is just made his army bigger. It's like, yeah, I'm a badass. Raise the dead. 
<laughs> like he didn't even do any like physical hand to hand combat or anything. Um, his generals did more fighting than he did, <laughs> at least not in not in that episode, but throughout the previous seasons. And they were a huge threat. They were from right from the the pilot episode, episode one. You saw that you know the army of the dead wasn't something you know to scoff at. And then you just have the Night King that gets taken down in a badass way, but still kind of lackluster, if that makes sense. Which <laughs> I think that 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 phrase right there encapsulates the whole season eight. Really badass, but it's done in a lackluster way. Um, the freaking mountain, he was more of a threat than the Night King. Like, if we saw, like, a fight at least somewhat like like between the hound and the mountain with the night king that would have been so much better having a freaking sword get stuck in your head and it doesn't do anything to you that just shows you that whatever the maester was working with, with like zombie zombification or whatever that was more of a threat than the freaking white walkers but anyway i digress because they freaking the cinematography in this season was hands down the MVP. Yeah, story, writing, you could say it was horrible. You could write a petition and have like 500,000 people, <laughs> you know, sign it. But you can't deny that the cinematography was grade A, albeit a little dark at times. I swear, the beginning of the, uh, the, the, the where you're fighting the night watch or not the night watch the white walkers i couldn't see shit <laughs> i literally thought like is are too many people like streaming this is it the quality just that bad but apparently not it's just really really dark but besides that the cinematography who the battle on the stairs between the hound and the mountain as it's crumbling you see flames in the background drogons flying by that was amazing just the epic the epicness that you feel from seeing this the one scene that i am gushing over is when finally daenerys um has king's landing well the ashes of it and she's walking to greet her army and you see freaking drogon in the back just spread his wings and she's right there Ooh, that was that was something else orgasmic but um yeah i mean the whole thing with danny he, she's trying to free the people of the world she's trying to be a better queen she's trying to break the wheel and throughout her whole story arc there's always you know those underlying issues of her father was the mad king she's going to become just like her father she's ruthless when it comes to like the slavers like she'll burn them alive she'll crucify you <laughs> and then you see her dragons die jora dies her best friend's head get cut off this all happens in a relatively short amount of time and it all happens because of one person who's sitting on the throne that should be rightfully yours. That's what pushes her over the edge. The one person she has faith in and loves has a better claim to the throne than her own claim. So right there, it's conflict. She's being assaulted in many angles and psychologically it's going to push her over the edge. Um, again, she shouldn't have done what she did, but in my opinion, it makes sense. Um, yeah, the citizens had no right to be burned down, butchered, massacred. But again, Cersei was using them as a weapon, kind of like a hostage. And in her eyes, she was going to do anything in her power to get to Cersei. It would have been better if she actually confronted Cersei, killed her herself, to actually you know to have her own hands you know put down the 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 family the lannisters that are just basically rubbing your own face and oh look we have the throne you know we're better than you that kind of thing um so yeah and that they dropped the ball on that part um but her going mad in my opinion it makes sense i know tons of you guys don't agree with that but um hey it happened. <laughs> like, the, um, I don't know. Like, I guess 
It happened. You can't really do anything about it. The petition that was being signed. There's no way that's going to go into effect and a new season's going to start. Because you got to get all the actors into it. All the money, hard work, two years of filming, keeping multiple endings. That way you don't know what's the actual truth uh, to what's actually being shot. The editing process, the CGI, the prosthetics, the thousands of extras, all the hours put into it. There's no way that petition's going to actually hold any weight to it. That just goes to show you how many people were disappointed in an ending. And no matter what ending Game of Thrones would have had, I'm a thousand percent sure we would have gotten similar um, outcries. You know, oh, this person should have lived. Oh, this person should have sat in the throne. And you can't please everyone, I guess. That's one way of putting it. And um, David... And uh, the other guy, <laughs> I forget his name, D&D, we'll call him. They put out, you know, some pretty pretty great stuff, you know, in their defense. Um, obviously, people aren't content with it. Obviously, people don't see the same way they see things. And, of course, you're going to have conflicts. You're going to have people disagreeing with you. But at the same time, I think they did all right. The foreshadowing was there. Uh, George R. R. Martin basically gave them the end point, and they were just trying to get there. Um, they, pro in many people's eyes, they stumbled on the way there. Hey, me myself, I agree, they stumbled there, but they got there in a thrilling yet lackluster way, I guess, if that makes sense. But again, even though it's lackluster, it looked beautiful. The cinematography, I, I, again, I'm going to stress this, the cinematography was the best thing about this episode, there this season. So all in all, I don't regret it. I don't hold any ill will towards the writers, towards the way it ended. It ended the way it did, and uh, you can't do anything about it. Game of Thrones gave us great times throughout the years. Something to look forward to, um, something to talk, be, talk about at work, you know, have those conversations of what if. If anything, if you don't enjoy the way it ended. Go write a fanfic. Um, Game of Thrones is so enticing. It, it literally had the world in its hands and everybody was talking about it. If you didn't watch Game of Thrones, you're probably ostracized. Um, you know, people would look at you like, what? You're not watching it? How could you? You heathen. And people would be like, yeah, I take pride in never watching a single episode. Well, you're missing out, because chances are you'll probably like it. Um, they take so many tropes and just run wild with it, give you amazing battles, amazing storytelling. Um, and overall, like, you expect the main character to be Ned Stark, and boom, you know, you've grown attached to him since the beginning of the season, and you see the way he's seeing things, only to find out that, hey, this is a cruel world, no one's safe. You can have all the best intentions in the world, but that doesn't necessarily mean that your story will end in a particularly good way. In his eyes, he did what he was doing for the benefit of his family, and it, it, it led him to the path he was on. Now, with many other characters, you have overarching arcs that, you know, span, you know, a bunch of episodes, and they end up in a way where you didn't like it. For example, Cersei. She was a bitch. I hated her guts, her smug look, her drinking wine. I was, I did not like her at all. And that just goes to show you that, boom, her writing, her character, and her acting got the results that they wanted the audience to feel hatred burning desire to have her you know be burned alive by drogon have her head cut off um and that's not what happened she died underneath uh king's landing crushed by rocks which looking at it simply she didn't deserve that she deserved to be tortured uh, for everything she's done she was you know the, the one scene that she really did well was when she was talking to, oh, I forgot who it was, it might have been Braun or somebody, 
and she was like power is power and then she told her soldiers to like seize him stop you know take two steps back turn around and it just goes to show that you know knowledge isn't power you could be the smartest person alive but it means nothing unless you actually have power you know she was given her soldiers command and they followed it to a T but that just goes to show you that she thought she had power she thought she had everything going her way Euron was on her side they had the catapults made the catapults took down a dragon she had literally the civilians as a hostage and she thought she had it and she didn't and that just goes to show her that her whole world collapsed on top of herself she was the one that was powerless she ended up at the bottom of the bottom beneath King's Landing she didn't even die on King's Landing she died underground you know she was beneath the world that she tried to to hold and it just goes to show her that she thought she was invincible in the Red Keep and the Red Keep is what killed her she chose to stay and staying led to her death so that just goes to show you that at first glance um, you may think oh the season was horrible but there's a lot of things to take from it Game of Thrones was there from the beginning and uh, the books were there too and now we have the books to look forward to after the end of the show again the show is just an interpretation you could go back and read the books and there's gonna be tons of things that weren't in the show so it's not over not by a long shot and I believe filming has also started on the prequel to Game of Thrones and I'm really looking forward to that so again guys there's a whole bunch of things I didn't you know touch on um, I could probably keep talking for like another whew, 20 minutes <laughs> So yeah, uh, as you can see, I have a lot to say, and uh, well, I'll see you in the comments. Let me know what you thought about this season. Let me know what you think about Game of Thrones. If you haven't seen Game of Thrones, why did you sit through 20 minutes of me talking, spoiling it to you? Go watch it. <laughs> but um, yeah, so uh, now that Game of Thrones is over, let me know in the comments down below what other things you are looking forward to, um, non-Game of Thrones related. And again... Uh, prove me wrong that this season was utter shit. <laughs> Again, the, the comment section is where I'll be lurking. So uh, I'll see you there. As always, this is the Sound Alchemist, part of One Mind Syndicate, and I'll catch you guys next time.